I got this stand of balsams on my property and they're all growing really close together. Um, so if I take one or two down, the rest of them will grow into maturity where if I just leave them all growing really close together, most of them will probably die or be stunted in the, in the uh, shorter term. Uh, so I decided to take some of these balsams and strip them and uh, I'm going to use them as fence posts, um, which I'm going to attach chicken wire to uh, so we can protect our garden from the groundhog and the squirrels and the rabbits and the deer. Before I take a draw knife to it, we really got, really got to make sure that uh, all these little uh, little sticks are taken off the flush. So don't get too far with the draw knife. draw knife that I'm using. It's a little curved. So it's great for uh, peeling smaller sized logs like this one. Perfect.
few uses for this bark. Makes good twine. It's kind of different cool projects you can do with this bark. So I'm just going to hang it up in the tree here to dry out. And uh, yeah, when it's uh, um, when the tree's green like this, especially in the spring, it's definitely a lot easier to get the bark off.
so nicely makes such good uh, kindling and uh, it would be perfect for the fence post but I only have uh, so much cedar um, on my property and balsam seems to be a lot more plentiful because uh, of the stage the forest is in here right now so that's why I use balsam, but cedar would be better. So I just hauled the logs back here. I got them cut into lengths about uh, six foot three or something like that. I just kind of paste them out and um, that'll give me enough to uh, dig them into the ground and still have a solid four foot high fence. And uh, what I'm gonna do, especially because they're not cedar, uh, they're gonna rot a little more easily. So I'm gonna actually burn the bottoms of them before I place them in the ground. And that'll hold the rot out a lot longer. So I'm just gonna get a fire going. I'm gonna torch the ends. That's the part that's gonna go in the ground. I'm gonna dig holes and I'm gonna place them in those holes. And uh, then we're just basically gonna wrap it in one inch chicken wire. Um, now, uh, obviously chicken wire is something that uh, you have to source at the hardware store and all they have is two inch chicken wire which we're worried might be a little too wide so we might have to wait a little bit until we get that uh, but fortunately it's not we're not in dire straits because we don't have anything in the ground growing quite yet um, usually at this latitude it doesn't make sense to plant until about june 1st um, so we got some of the uh, non-native plants already sprouted inside the house which is cool so yeah, just getting a fire going and then I'm gonna burn the bottom of these things and hopefully we can get them into the ground before it's dark. Cedar makes great kindling. It burns really bright, but really fast. So it's not the best, um, it's good for, for light, but uh, it's awesome wood because it's so lightweight. So it's good for um, doing things where, like for example, building a log cabin where you need to hoist the logs up high. Um, birch bark canoes, uh, wood canvas canoes, great to have light wood, but uh, good for burning, not so much to get off that heat.
Well, I'm just about done. Nice and charred. And this part, the burnt part, is going to be the part that goes underground. It's gonna be about beer o'clock, eh, honey? Yeah, do you put beers in the fridge? Oh, you better believe it. Well, a lot of people have been asking me what I plan to do to keep the critters out of our terrace garden. <clears throat> As you can see from the last video, there's a lot of wildlife around here. Uh, we got a groundhog that just lives under our woodshed, uh, deer around here, you name it, squirrels, rabbits. Um, it's not a whole ton you can do to protect from the birds unless you start uh, caging in the top, but uh, rabbits will put a herd on it pretty good too and uh, the deer might sneak in here you know early morning and uh, trample stuff um, or just basically have their own help themselves to a buffet uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're basically just going to put uh, a chicken wire fence around it and um, instead of just buying lumber from the store i actually uh, went out and i cut two balsam fir trees uh, there's a lot of balsam fir trees around here and some of them are growing really close together um, so I'm not too worried about uh, taking too many trees from my property because I know when they're growing that close together they're not all going to live into maturity so just by thinning out a little stand a bit um, it'll make it so uh, more trees will live long term as opposed to them all struggling and, and killing each other. So I took two and that gives me uh, all the wood I need to make my fence posts. So 
Um, I strip the bark off of those. Uh, stripping the bark off will definitely help them last longer as well because uh, there's not sort of uh, insect and rot buildup between the bark and the wood. And then I've gone ahead and burnt the ends of them and that's gonna help a lot because it's not pressure treated wood and it's gonna be in the ground long term. Um, so I went and give, gave them a really good deep char and that's gonna prevent them from rotting much, much quicker. So the next step is to go around and dig deep holes and uh, sink these in in a perimeter of our terrace garden. So what I'm gonna go do now is I'm gonna dig holes and I'm going to put those fence posts in the holes and when we can get our hands on some chicken wire, we're going to put chicken wire in between them and uh, make a little gate too so we can get in and out more easily. Um, so yeah. Uh, we can't get our hands on chicken wire. Um, there's, you know, one hardware store close to us, about 10, 15 minutes. It's great, but it doesn't always have what you need. It's a very small uh, village. And then the next one's 25 minutes. It doesn't have it. So without taking about a 45 minute round trip each way, we're going to have to wait a little till we can get our hands on it. But that's okay. We don't have any uh, plants right now in the soil yet. Um, and uh, she's also done some more mixing of the soil. She added some peat moss, um, some more local soil, and we think uh, it's gonna work well. So yeah, a couple more minutes here. I'm gonna let this last log char at the bottom, and then I'm gonna start digging. I don't know if I'm gonna get them all put in today, but I'm gonna give her a good shot.
dictated by what kind of soil I have. The last one, I couldn't get it in because it was all just raw. This one's just about perfect. So, because this hole was nice and deep, I was able to reinforce it with rocks and I decided to use a thicker one of my posts because uh, the thicker posts are gonna take a little more to support them. Bugs are starting to come out. too too bad of a bug year this year. Last year was just brutal. good sign if we can budget but it's like need the leverage of a pick but without digging the hole freaking ten times bigger be hard to haul out of here Dry bar too. Big guns. Yes. <sighs> well, some holes are harder than others. <sighs> Get out of there, you bastard. Well, good news is that the hole's deep enough now. Hello, China.
yeah. Right on. Push the dirt in. Those rocks. How's it going out there? Good. This one was ridiculous. I took it a boulder. I used it again. I took it a boulder. Like I, I had to dig it like a mat. It was crazy. It was really dirty. It was like it was a war. It was it, it just it was just me versus the boulder. But it's super secure. to look at I'm gonna put there's gonna be three posts at the front because I'm gonna hang the door between one of the corner posts and another one so I might put something here this one might be interesting we got a big rock right here keep your fingers crossed oh uh oh not a good sign. You don't know if it's going to be a piece of cake or a pain in the butt. sneak down beside this big boulder. Oh yeah. It's not gonna be perfectly where I want it to go, but there's no way I'm getting this freaking house-sized boulder out of here. Twenty-two inches deep, except for the very first one. Okay, it's pretty damn good. I'm really working hard out here, honey. Yeah, I want to get the shot. How are the bugs? Oh, I've got a mosquito coil going over there, but no, they're not bad. I think this uh, burning thing was key, especially because we couldn't use cedar. Yeah, you know? why do you burn it again? Just because it stops it from rotting. Okay. You know, it just like zaps the moisture in it and creates a barrier in between it because like burying it in soil is like the best thing you could do to try to get it to rot. You know what I mean? So by burning it, you create a barrier uh, that will last a long time before the rot sink, sinks into the wood. What do you think, Tor? I think it looks great. All right, stamp of approval. Okay, so last one. Um, and this one is actually gonna go in the front and uh, our door is gonna be here. So 
This is how we're going to access it through this door. So I'm going to put two sturdy ones here and uh, those will hold the door and that's how we'll access it and then chicken wire is going to be surrounding the whole thing um, which hopefully works. Corey's just uh, measuring out the perimeter to make sure we uh, order the right amount of uh, chicken wire. So 10 foot 10. Yeah we'll just make the uh, the door we'll just hammer a 2x4 onto the edge of that you know. So so 20 feet so that's 30 30 feet 10 inches. Uh -huh. Alright I'm going back in. That'll be the door. Make the door out of two by fours. Woo! That's like a hard day's work. So well, there we go. We got a bunch of logs harvested and stripped, and the ends burnt so they won't rot in the ground. Then I went ahead and dug holes and I sunk those logs into the ground, of course, putting the burnt side in and a perimeter around the terrace vegetable garden and uh, those are going to be fence posts for the chicken wire we get now we tried to get chicken wire we've been trying to get chicken wire for a couple of days and like nowhere within a half an hour drive of us has it and there's only two places that carry it so without taking a 45 50 minute drive uh, we couldn't get any and um, so we're just gonna have to wait but that's what happens sometimes when you live in a more rural area you know everyone's not gonna have everything you need right at your fingertips so you have to be patient you got to improvise and you got to plan ahead for sure um, yeah so I think it looks good um, it cost me absolutely nothing uh, I took a couple trees just from my property only two and I took balsams which are plentiful in this stage of the forest we have around here I could have taken cedars but I don't have too many of them cedars would have done a lot better at uh, at not rotting but I think by burning the ends I gave them the best chance they can get and uh, the next steps are going to be doing what we call square foot gardening Tori's been researching it a lot Tori actually today mixed in some peat and kind of mixed that soil up so we're pretty positive we have uh, a good soil mixture that's between the the native soil between some peat moss between some topsoil we bought and uh, we also we even had some uh, triple mix or just compost that we bought too so we got a lot of mixtures of stuff we got some ash from our fire in there as well so we're confident that we have what's going to be great soil and uh, yeah the bugs are starting to come out man and uh, yeah, so we're, we're feeling pretty good about that. So next step is going to be getting uh, basically a string tied across the raised beds and tacked down on either end to sort of make it into square feet so we know we can, we can uh, plant this many on this side, this, or this many in this square foot, and this vegetable can grow this many in this square foot, and also what vegetables will grow best close to each other. So there's all kinds of tips and interesting stuff to learn. It's really a science. So that's exciting. We're learning more about that. Looking forward to share some of what we're learning about that and uh, looking forward to getting the next steps done. But felt great today to get this step done. A heck of a lot more work to say the least than uh, just going and picking up some two by fours from the, uh, you know, from the hardware store. But uh, you know what, this actually, I think it, going to look better because those strip logs look cool so it looks more natural and uh, it costs absolutely nothing so you can't go wrong on that zero dollars is always a good price so a little bit of elbow grease but I like what we came up with 
sunny times. Stick around. Please subscribe. Check out the next steps in this. Check out my adventure videos. Uh, there's a lot in playlists, big trips in the Arctic, whitewater trips, fishing, you name it. Uh, you should enjoy that and uh, stick around and watch what we get finished here on the home front too. So thanks a lot and uh, take care till next time.